Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, continuing with our 2022 season previews as we take a look at the BYU Cougars. This is one of our teams. We are big fans of BYU. They know how to do it in Provo. So if you guys are listening and you guys are BYU fans, you guys are absolutely awesome. That is what college football is about. I love watching the night games out at BYU because you guys just, you know how to do it. Before we get into it, I just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support. It's been a blast talking with all of you guys the last year about college football, about the NFL draft. And if you guys do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We just add, we, we appreciate all the support. It, it really is really cool. Still, BYU returns a lot of stuff, a lot of key players for 2022, and they were one of the better teams in 2021. We're going to start on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to be about one a year, guys. BYU seems to be a QB factory with Zach Wilson and now Jaron Hall, who you think could be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Tell me a little bit about this offense and what you like about Jaron Hall in this offense. I mean, I've been saying it, but I think that Jaron Hall is like a more athletic Johnny Johnny Manziel, at least at the college level, because he, he actually has like legit running chops to make big, big plays and score touchdowns, do 50-plus yard runs, all that. But he also is electric in the pocket, and I don't think he's like a premier, premier in the pocket passer. But when he can break the pocket and throw on the run and, and find guys, he's really effective, and that's BYU. That helped their offense a lot, especially against a team like Baylor, who was, who was kind of getting on them a little bit with their defensive front, as they were with everybody. So he does allow them to – to bump up with those big dogs and, and make some plays that I don't think a lot of other quarterbacks at the non-power five level do. Yeah. That's that. When you see BYU in 2020 and in 2021 competing with those top power five schools, I mean, they beat a Utah team that almost beat Ohio state in the Rose Bowl. They are competing with some of the best power five teams in the country. And what the years that they do that, they have a magical quarterback like Zach Wilson and now Jaron Hall, and I actually don't hate the Johnny Manziel comp. Obviously, Johnny was really special. Jaron Hall might not be at that level, but he has that flash to him. He has that, that playmaking ability. And it's exciting to see him coming back for a fifth year because I feel like there's still some meat on the bone of his game that he can develop. And he's bringing back his, his top wide receivers. And I think Jaron Hall can make a massive step, and they might need to lean a little bit more on him, obviously, with Tyler Algier being gone. Let's take a look at those wide receivers. Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, two guys that really excite me. BYU is one of the more explosive offenses in the country. They're actually seventh in the explosive metric. There yeah. is no better two wide receivers at winning jump balls and making big plays down the field because yeah. I wouldn't say either of them are like burners. But awesome. if you're if they're one on one with a DB, they're generally good chance they're coming down with the ball. So that really does help Jaron Hall. Because they're not guys who are getting open. It's not like they're wide open running down the field typically, but they just they're they're playmakers and they're ball hawks. So yeah, they they both have extreme ball skills, extreme body control. I, Jaron Hall and Zach Wilson both seem to get really good at kind of throwing those back shoulder ones too. And so yeah. that chemistry, keeping those guys and Jaron Hall coming all coming back, that chemistry is going to get better, and that timing is just going to get better. You know who I want to see play more, like just because I think he can add a new wrinkle to what Nakua and Romney do, is is Keanu Hill. I think he's right. got more of the prototypical make plays with the ball in your hand type skills. And I know Puka Nakua is actually pretty good with it. I know you give his rushing stat, which is kind of a ridiculous number he put up on, on a few carries. But that, I think, is a, a, a play they can build into their offense and use them a little more than they did last year because he does complement those two and has more – let's say traditional wide out skills along and, and with Isaac Rex. Who's, a, who's really good. I was, I was just going to say Isaac Rex can be a top 10 tight end in the country. He didn't put up the numbers. I think he is capable of putting up. And now that they probably need to go to the air a little bit more, I would like, I think Isaac Rex, he has the bones to be like a 500 yard tight end work the middle of the field. You have two really, really good boundary receivers. And then you get an Isaac Rex, a big body who is really tough over the middle of the field working there I think that could add another dimension to this team and that's why I'm so excited and kind of high on this BYU team is because there is still like that team was 10 and 3 last year looked really really good minus the one UAB bowl game which I just don't think they were really up to be playing that wasn't it almost like a hurricane or something yeah so it was, yeah yeah the weather was nuts but 
outside of that, I think there's still a lot of meat on the bone for as good as this team was. I think they can still take some steps. I mean, I think Jaron Hall can be better. No doubt he believes he can be better. If he didn't believe he could get better, he would have won in the yeah, QB class this year. Class. That was a joke. And he says, no, I'm a quarterback, and I can go in the first round, and I'm going to show I can go in the first round. And so, I, th- especially in the passing game, there is some meat on this bone. And in the run game, I really, really like the transfer of Christopher Brooks from Cal, a 6'1", 235-pound back, Tyler Algier type Smells running like back. Smells like Tyler, Tyler Algier. Yeah, I was going to say, they don't grow on trees, and I'm not saying Brooks is going to be better than Tyler Algier because – Tyler Alger was absolutely awesome at what he did for that BYU offense. But Christopher Brooks, when you go watch his highlights, he runs the ball like Tyler Alger. In those stretch zone concepts, he's one cut up the field looking for bodies to hit. That was what Tyler Alger did. And I don't think that run game will take a hit. Not only because I think Christopher Brooks is a solid back. I don't think he's as good as Tyler Alger. But let's take a look at this offensive line that's one of the better they're, guys. They're the bringing back pretty much the whole, like, all those guys started and then adding the transfer with uh, King Kingsley Sumat- Sumat- Sumatia. He's a stud. I yeah. I mean, you got in- you're locked up with tackle, uh, left tackle with Blake Freeland. Uh, Clark Barrington, the left guard, is also good. I mean, those that left side of the offensive line is, is really physical. They look for bodies to hit. And then on the right tackle, you get better with the Kingsley Sumatia transfer. Who That's what I think. You can move – Campbell Barrington, who who was playing right tackle last year, and you can put a true tackle in. Who, yeah, a guy you I guess you haven't seen a ton of yet in college, but you know he's got the certainly chance. came in with a ton of talent. And if they can have two really good tackles, because they did struggle a little bit with the two teams they did. I honestly it was Utah and, and Baylor who were able to get on them a little bit with blitzes and stunts and all that type of activity because they weren't necessarily beating them up one-on-one but I think if you have a true athletic tackle who who maybe can handle that that part of the game more I think they might be better prepared to be more effective pass protectors because they did have Jaron Hall running for his life a fair amount against Baylor and to a lesser extent Utah but still giving up a few pressures yeah I mean that Baylor team is some some absolute mammoths to 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 yeah. keep up with. But, yeah, I, I agree. I think their offensive line gets better. And it was already a very good unit last year. They lose a guy like James Emphrey, who was a really, really good center, but he didn't really play much last year due to injury. Now, the the more concern and the step forward I want to see this BYU take to, to be a team that can compete for kind of running the table is the defense because the defense was okay at best and they were they were really bend but don't break but they would often break a lot in the red zone like you look at their stats um they were 51th 51st in scoring defense so pretty mid-tier for for a college football defense but then they were 70 75th in, in yards per game so they were giving up a lot of yards and trying to play some red zone roulette well the biggest flaw i saw in this defense was they just weren't very disruptive with the front four guys. They That's the problem. They're sack. playing three defensive tackles, really, it looks like. Yes. And not blitzing enough. I think they should be blitzing every play, personally. Because when they were bringing guys like uh, number 45, what is it? That's the Kafusi brother. The, another one of the really good, like a Jackson Kafusi, and they can bring some of those athletic linebackers around, I think that's when that defense looks really good. And I think sometimes they do play a little bit of a, a passive style where if you're playing a good quarterback, it just doesn't work. Just gonna get they, they just, they just won't make enough mistakes for you to, to capitalize. So that's kind of, I think break send Cause they do hold the run down really well with those guys up front. Number 62 is a horse. Yeah, he, he, is, he is a horse. And uh, he's not an elite pass rusher for sure, but, Bring the linebackers and get after a guy. That makes it really hard for people to score on that defense. It was a tale of two cities. The Utah game, they were at home, and they were playing in a really aggressive brand of defense. And it, it really affected Charlie Brewer, and they could not run the football. They could not really step up and pass at all. And that is when you saw that defense at its best. And when you saw its defense at its worst, it was that bend but don't break. We're going to play really conservative. We're going to give you the easy throws and not put pressure on the quarterback. And, again, 109th in sacks is just simply not cutting it. And their leading their their leading sacker only had three and a half sacks. So there was not not a guy that you could go to. You know, I don't think that could be a bad stat, but the problem is is that they need to be a blitzing team and they're just maybe yeah. you just didn't see enough of that. Because again, I don't think they're not gonna have a ten and a half sack guy on the roster. You just look at who they have. Wow. 
that's not who those guys are as pass rushers. But that when you do play that three, five, or whatever you would call it, you can make it hard on offensive lines by scheming up good blitzes. And when they did it, they were actually, I thought, really good. Like they were able to get home a fair amount. So I feel like if they just push the rate of blitzing up, I think they could, that would really help them. Yeah. And then their linebackers, you kind of mentioned it. They're good. That's a good unit. They're returning like four guys with starting production. Ben Brywater, 102 tackles, eight and a half tackles for a loss. Peyton Wilger, 57 tackles, seven TFLs. Um, and then Keenan Pilly, who only played three games last year, had 31 tackles and three and a half for a loss. I mean, he was on pace for a, a very, very good game. He was a guy that jumped out at me. I go check his stats and I realized, oh, he didn't play at all. And so uh, they have some guys that you mentioned they can use and get aggressive with. I just would like to see them do more. And then secondary, I think, is really, really good. A guy like Malik Moore had, what, three interceptions last year. Caleb Hayes is really sticky, 11 passes defended, I believe only 10 games. Then they go get a transfer from Vanderbilt and, and Gabe Judy Lally, who his SEC experience, he was solid for Vanderbilt. They're a good secondary. That That's a good secondary returning a lot of guys. It was really. a good secondary, but when they were getting hurt, it was more just because quarterbacks were sitting in a pocket that just they didn't have any heat. And as good of a secondary as you can have, it doesn't matter if the quarterback has six, seven seconds to throw and the wide receivers yeah. can create separation. There's and no so I, I, I really do think that's the key for this BYU defense is just play a little bit more with your hair on fire because that's when you guys were at your best. Now let's take yeah, a look like, at like how Oklahoma State did it when they like that's yes. what the BYU model feels like it could be because they're not individually a ton of pros on that defense. They can scheme up the pressure. So you can play the base and just you have the dogs like a Will Anderson. You know, like, I actually, they, I actually play great team defense and 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 they have because they're talented across the board, just not mega stars. Yeah, I actually, I actually love that that comp because Oklahoma State is similar. They don't have. Uh, an edge defender who's like, oh, that guy's going to go first round. He's elite. But they led the, the country in sacks last year because Jim Knowles was just scheming up a really, really good blitz packages. Yeah. Taking a look at their schedule, I really oh. like how their schedule plays out. So you got South Florida on the road. Start. US, yeah, but it's a good start because Baylor and Oregon. So Baylor's coming to you, and we already mentioned Provo gets lit. Like it, That yep. is an absolute banger of a stadium. I'm going to do my best to make it out there, getting up in the mountains, I mean, I feel like that's got to be a, a top 10 college football experience. Oh, 100%. So you know we got to see right. if we can make it out there. Um, but I like that because Blake Shapin hasn't had much starting experience. He's coming to Baylor. They have a lot of new faces on the defense and it's side. It's going to be loud. And you're getting them early. And- yeah, you're getting them early. And the same thing with Oregon. I know you're not at home, but they don't know who's their co- starting quarterback yet. If you have a new coach, you have a new starting quarterback, you have a lot of new faces. So you're getting a lot of these good teams who – we're high on Baylor. We're high on Oregon. I think we're high on Oregon. We're, we're undecided on Oregon. We're high on Baylor. But you're getting them early, and that's the best time to get them because they, they do have a lot of rotation. Then you play Wyoming at home. You should take care of them. I do not think Utah State will be as good as they were last year. They're losing a lot of guys who, who were really good pass catchers. Yeah, this that, schedule you know, is awesome. This it's is awesome. A fun schedule. If they, can, if they can figure out a way to beat Baylor and Oregon and go on the road to Notre Dame in October – you're talking Probably playoffs. being a top 10 team. Oh, and, well, for, if they run the table, they're a playoff team. You cannot oh, argue that. They're going to beat an SEC team. They're going to beat Notre Dame, and they're going to be a, a, the reigning Big, Ten, Big 12 champs. And Oregon, who might win the Pac-12. But anyways, Notre Dame on the road. That's where, if you're undefeated going into that, that's college game day. That's going to be absolutely electric. And then right after, you got Arkansas coming to Provo. Arkansas is a good SEC team. We're high on them. They're going to be good. But, again, it's just fun. BYU's got a ton of good teams on their schedule. I and love you, their schedule. This is yeah, a lot they, then, then, then you finish off with some easier games in Liberty. I, I, you got Charlie Brewer's revenge game, so be careful. But he's horrible. East Carolina, who's actually not a bad team. You can't overlook them. Boise State, who got them last year. Utah Tech and Stanford, they should take care of business. I mean, I don't think – Vegas has them at eight and a half games. There's not a game where I don't think they can win. I mean, even Notre Dame. I don't think Notre Dame is going to be that good. Yeah, but they have four legit big dogs on the oh, schedule, yeah. in my opinion. So that yeah, when you say okay, their win total, like they do have a really hard schedule, considering they're not part of one of the power conferences. But guess what? BYU is going to be a very good team. I don't think there's a single team on their schedule. Like realistically, they'll they they couldn't hang with Georgia, Alabama. There's really only a few teams that could. I don't even think. 
There's like maybe three teams that could hang with those teams right now. Yeah. But like all these teams, Notre Dame, Baylor, Oregon, you can hang with those teams and you get Baylor at home. Like I, I just I think this is a, a, a gettable schedule for them, as hard as it sounds. That'll do it for a 2022 season preview on BYU. Again, this is a team that the fellas are high on. We like Jaron Hall. We like the guys that have come back on offense. They're going to be able to run the ball. Shout out Kalani Sataki just doing an incredible he job. He awesome at, at BYU. And that culture that the BYU fans have is just uh, – Yeah, it's great. Time. He's it's, got it back fun, to right. where it's, like, electric and it's fun and it's sick. So, yeah, yeah I can't Good wait to him. get on Provo. So, if you guys are BYU fans, let us know. We're trying to come out there. We appreciate the support. If you guys do like the content, subscribe to the channel, and that will do it. Talk to you all later.